Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel Dentistry to the Point. This is Dr. Drumil Malik. So after we discuss about the introduction and the etiopathogenesis of OSMF, next we are moving on to the clinical features of oral submucosal fibrosis. So firstly, in the clinical features, we are going to see the most common age, sex, and site. This is the as usual pattern which we are following. So the most common age of occurrence will be between 20 to 40 years. The most of the patients or the cases of oral submucosal fibrosis are seen between this age group that is 20 to 40 years. Most common sex that means both sexes are equally affected. There is no sex predilection seen regarding oral submucosal fibrosis. Now which are the most common sites? So the first and the foremost common site is your buccal mucosa then retromolar pad, retromolar area, sorry not retromolar pad then soft palate, palatal fauces or you can say fascial pillars then uvula, tongue, labial mucosa, floor of the mouth and gingiva I will repeat this once again that is buccal mucosa, retromolar area, soft palate, palatal fauces tongue, uvula, labial mucosa, gingiva and floor of the Mouth. So these are the most common sites. Now the symptoms or the clinical presentation of this disorder is divided into two parts. First is the prodromal symptoms or the initial symptoms with the patient present during the initial course of the disease and then advanced symptoms when later this disease is going to become more severe then there are some advanced symptoms also. So firstly starting with the prodromal symptoms, firstly burning sensation in the mouth while consuming spicy food. The patient is going to experience burning sensation in his mouth whenever he is exposed or his or her oral mucosa is exposed to spicy food. Along with that he will also present with blisters on palate. Various numerous blisters will be seen on palate then ulceration and generalized inflammation can also be seen of oral mucosa. We had studied in the de definition that chronic inflammatory reaction so ulceration and generalized inflammation then excessive salivation defective gustatory sensations taste sensations will get defective along with that there will be sometimes even dryness of mouth there will be periods of exacerbation now there are some periods in which the patient is going to be presenting with numerous small Vesicles, a period aega this my patient ki oral mucosa ya buccal mucosa ya palate mein numerous small vesicles dekhne ko milegi. Now this period may vary from 3 months to 1 year. Marlab every 3 months or every year he is going to be presenting with numerous small vesicles. So these can vary according to the uh, severity of the disease. Next pain in the areas of fibrotic bands. Wherever the fibrous bands are pre present the patient is going to present with pain if you press those bands agar aap us bands ko palpit karke press karoge then he is going to experience pain in those areas so these were your prodromal symptoms let's revise them once again sabse pehle burning sensation on spicy food blisters on palate ulceration ya generalized inflammation excessive salivation gustatory sensation defective ho jayenge yani taste sensation dryness of mouth also seen sometimes Numerous small vesicles ka ek period aega jisme har 3 mahine ya 1 saal tak ke difference mein aapko dekhne ko milenge and pain in fibrotic bands next advanced symptoms kya rahenge iske advanced symptoms rahenge blanching of oral mucosa you can see blanching of oral mucosa matlab ek whitish appearance dikhegi aapko along with that fibrous bands appear on lips and buccal mucosa which is affected first right Everyone used to think that retromolar areas and palate is affected first but now lips and buccal mucosa are clinically affected first along with that you will see blanching of oral mucosa. You will see a whitish appearance which will be called blanching of oral mucosa. You will see the patient's mouth and face that will be sunken. You will be sunken in the cheeks and the Christmas inability to blow because there are fibrotic bands so the flexibility or the Resiliency of the oral mucosa is lost. That's why the patient is not able to blow properly. Next, depapillated tongue. जो भी papilla रहेंगे, they are going to shed. So depapillated tongue. उसके साथ साथ अगर tongue या floor of the mouth में fibrotic bands रहे, तो tongue he can't protrude the tongue. 
so easily which he was doing before so restricted tongue movements along with that if you notice the uvula of most of the cases then it will be hockey stick shaped or bud shaped uvula this is the most characteristic finding this is can also be asked in mcq that hockey stick uvula or bud shaped uvula kis mein dikhta hai then it is oral submucosal fibrosis we already written inability to blow then pain in the area of fibrotic band again so this is the same seen in the prodromal symptoms so these are the clinical features and presentation of oral submucosal fibrosis next we'll move on to the histological features and treatment of this condition so next starting with the histological features and treatment of oral submucosal fibrosis so before starting with this i would like to mention you guys that i'll also make a video regarding the various staging of oral submucosal fibrosis there are two to three stages given by different authors which are important from your point of view so i'll make another video for that for for, for now we'll have histological features and treatment so starting with the histological features of oral submucosal fibrosis firstly the epithelium will be atrophic we studied in the definition that atrophy of the epithelium so the epithelium is going to be atrophic and it is not going to have any reticulum the epithelium will be flat or short but it is not going to have prominent reticulum jaisi reticulum is normal epithelium mein rehti hai waisi nahi rahegi second juxta epithelial hyalinization so the connective tissue part just adjacent to the epithelium that is basement membrane ke just niche just below the basement membrane you will see a layer of hyalinization so that is juxta epithelial hyalinization the next third point is fibrosis with dense bundles of collagen fibers in connective tissue this is the but obvious finding and main finding regarding oral submucosal fibrosis that kya dikhega aapko fibrous dense bands dikhenge in the connective tissue right next narrow blood vessels due to this overgrowth of collagen fibers or more of fibrosis the blood vessels are going to get compressed or they are going to become narrow so the blood vessels will be narrow next is focal collection of inflammatory cells in some areas of connective tissue you will see a focus or a focal connection of various inflammatory cells ek jagah pe bahut sare inflammatory cells accumulate ho gaya aisa aapko dikhega so that is focal collection of inflammatory cells next there is in severe cases if you notice there will be degeneration of muscle we studied in the etiopathogenesis is that apart from fibrosis there was also something which was in seen in severe cases that is degeneration of muscle so these are the histopathological findings there are five points short retinitis juxta epithelial hyalinization fibrosis focal inflammatory cells narrow blood vessels and in severe cases degeneration of muscle fibers next moving on to the treatment of osm of them first and the foremost thing which you need to ask the patient to do is quitting the habit this is most important if the patient agar apni habit quit nahi kara then there is no chance of doing the treatment or there is no use of particularly curing that patient so quitting the habit educating the patient motivating him and slowly trying to shift him towards not consuming the arika nut or betel nut can be very much helpful next nutritional support bhi maintain karna rahega the diet which you give should be of high proteins and calories along with that vitamin d complex vitamins are also very much important so next second point is immunomodulatory drugs various immunomodulatory drugs local or systemic can be given like glucocorticoids like local or systemic application of glucocorticoids or placental extracts are used this may decrease the inflammatory reaction jo bhi inflammatory reaction ho rahi that will be decrease along with that the fibrosis which is occurring can also be reduced to some extent so local and systemic application of glucocorticoids and placental extracts next physiotherapy in physiotherapy this is very much helpful that forceful mouth opening along with mouth exercises blowing of mouth heat therapy these are very much helpful so eventually when the patient is going to practice this then the fibrotic bands are going to break up and the mouth opening is going to increase right so physiotherapy plays a very much important role and second first was quitting the habit second is 
physiotherapy next is local drug uh, local drug delivery so along with the immunomodulatory drugs you can also provide hyaluronidase and collagenase even these are going to reduce the collagen fibers and formation of fibrosis next is combined therapy so the combined therapy of all the things can be given now this was based on the severity of the cases but you can also provide combined therapy constituting the peripheral vasodilators vitamins iodine and placental extracts local or systemic corticosteroids and physiotherapy so this in turn in a combined form can also be given and it is very much effective lastly jo hai surgical management of surgical management mein kya hoga they are going to cut the fibrotic bands and open the mouth forcefully but this is not shown very much of success rate if the patient is in more severe form then this is done and he is not able to quit the habit but it has not shown very much success rate so this is about the treatment of oral submucosal fibrosis along with histological features i hope you guys have understood and if you enjoyed the video then please like share and subscribe our channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get regular updates of our lectures thank you